Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A smash and grab on the northwest side of San Antonio with three thieves managed to get away with at the shops at La Cantera. The Democratic candidates are now turning their focus to New Hampshire and gearing up for tonight's debate. I'm Inez de la Quatera, and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, another cold start to your day, but boy, it's going to be a beautiful Friday. Mike is standing by with details. And good morning, and the key part of that sentence is Friday. It is Friday. It is fe uh, March. No, I'm sorry, March. It's February. It's February. See, look, I wrote down March. You know why? I don't know why. Uh, it's closer to spring break and other vacations. Oh, so. is, that, is that what it is? Yeah, so February. Well, you missed uh, Valentine's so. Day. I know. My 30th anniversary. So let's, can we slow down a little bit? Okay. Those are important. Yeah, they're very important. Uh, hopefully, it's going to be a beautiful Friday. It's going to be gorgeous. Yesterday was fantastic. We had a couple of clouds in the afternoon, mm -hmm. mid, mid to upper 50s around here. Much warmer today. Just sensational. Oh, good. I love that yep. Friday. And tomorrow's going to be a good looking day as well. Sunday, a little, a little iffy. We'll talk more about that. Uh, nice view looking off to the uh, northwest. It's cold out there once again. Once again, we do have a lot of freezing temperatures. Uh, 26 in Comfort, 28 Balverde. We're at 34 at the airport. It's going to be kind of, you know, yesterday we did dip down to uh, 31 degrees. It's going to be kind of iffy if we do hit freezing this morning. It's going to be obviously very close to it. Freezing in your backyard, uh, you know, with 28 at Hondo, Port SA at 31 right now. And there is a little bit of a wind chill, not much of a breeze, but just enough to add that little bite to some of these temperatures. Then a huge warm up throughout the day. First of all, by the way, mountain cedar, mold, ash, everything is on the low side, which is fantastic. Maybe the mountain cedar season is finally coming to an end because we did have that front a couple of days ago. Now, this morning, temperatures will stay low 30s or 20s, wherever it may be, kind of uh, steady for the next couple of hours and then like I said a huge warm up throughout the day. We're going to gain almost 40 degrees thanks to a little bit of a westerly wind coming off the, uh, the Edwards Plateau there and the mountains of Mexico and that helps to warm us up 70. Like I said, tomorrow's going to be a great looking day as well. Sunday, a little iffy. We'll talk about that coming up. Time saver traffic right now on this Friday morning. Here is Officer Nick Salise. Hey, good going on. Hey, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great Friday morning. Yeah, we got some stuff going on this morning. Uh, currently, officers are working a fatality accident on the northbound lanes of uh, 37 and Commerce Street. It looks like they still have those that road closed. Uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, they could be opening it up here soon, but that road is still closed right now due to that accident. We also have this, a weekend road closure, Alamo Ranch Parkway to State Highway 151. It's going to be closed from 5 a.m. To, or from 9 p.m. tonight all the way to 5 a.m. Monday morning. So if you live in the Alamo Ranch area, expect a lot of traffic, heavy delays. You might want to take Calabria to 1604, turn around to Wiseman and go back to 151 because here is going to be closed all weekend. All right, let's take a look at the trans guide. 1604 and Calabria, speaking of 151, there you go, looking good. 37 and I-10 looking great right now. Let's do one more here. Let's see. 37 at Carolina is looking very, very good. Well, I'll keep you updated on that accident. Mark Leslie, back to you. We do have more Nick. A man is dead after hitting a concrete barrier on Highway 281 early this morning. It happened near Commerce and Highway 281 northbound in the downtown area. Sarah Costa is live with the latest. Sarah? And good morning, guys. That accident literally just clearing moments ago, right before you guys took me. Uh, but I'm going to step out so you can see at least a locator of where this happened. This happened 281 northbound. You see that Days In sign right behind us there. That's where that accident happened. The lanes are still closed. I bet you they're going to open up those lanes any moment now. But what we know so far is a man who was driving on Highway 281 northbound, striking a concrete barrier. Oh, the lanes did it just open again. Okay. Well, the impact killed him, according to police. To give you an idea of where we are, we're along 281. The accident happened on the northbound lanes near the Alamo Dome on one side and Marriott River Center on the other side of the highway. Police say they got the call at 2 this morning for the fatal accident involving only one call. When first responders arrived on scene, they pronounced that man dead. They say he was possibly ejected from his vehicle. And at this time, they have not released any identification of that 20 year old who died from this accident. But they did say they believe it's a man in his 20s. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, Case at 12 News. Mark and Leslie. In your other morning headlines, Democratic presidential candidates continue to wait for the Iowa caucus results. Meanwhile, the party's strongest contenders are preparing for what could be the first clash of the primary season. 
ABC's Inez de la Cuadera has the latest as they move on to New Hampshire. Overnight, the two leading Democratic candidates trying to move past Iowa. Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg appearing in separate town halls on CNN. We've got enough of Iowa. I think we should <laughs> move on to New Hampshire. I also know that we're in New Hampshire now. <laughs> we got to look ahead. With 100% of precincts reporting, there's still no clear front runner in the Hawkeye state. Buttigieg and Sanders only one tenth of a percentage point apart, and both declaring victory. DNC Chairman Tom Perez now calling for a re canvas of Iowa, telling MSNBC I want to make sure that every Iowa voter knows that their vote was counted and that we take our commitment to accuracy uh, very seriously. Former Vice President Joe Biden, who finished in fourth place, admitting he took a gut punch in the caucuses, but insisting, I'm not going anywhere. And I'm counting on New Hampshire. We're going to come back. The presidential hopefuls now crisscrossing New Hampshire. Hello, Derry! Hello, Exeter, New Hampshire. How are you? And they're looking ahead to tonight's ABC News WMUR debate. New Hampshire is not the kind of place to let Iowa or anybody else tell you what to do. Biden is home in Delaware preparing, and he's already been sharpening his attacks. He calls himself a Democratic Socialist. Well, we're already seeing what Donald Trump is going to do with that. Seven presidential candidates will square off on that debate stage tonight, just days ahead of the New Hampshire primary. Officials there say they are ready for Tuesday's vote. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. San Antonio police still on the lookout this morning for three men involved in a jewelry heist yesterday afternoon. Officers say the robbers smashed the display counters at the Tiffany and Company jewelry store at the shops in La Quintera. Investigators say they were wearing all black and used a wooden hammer in the robbery. The three men left the scene in a gray colored sedan. No injuries were reported, but the store had to close its doors as damage costs were being estimated. The thieves got away with more than $100,000 worth of merchandise. Now to the latest on the coronavirus. A group of travelers expected to arrive at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland as early as this morning. As many as 250 people could be quarantined on the base. For the next 14 days, the evacuees will be leaving China under quarantine. The Centers for Disease Control representatives said the evacuees would be at the Gateway Inn, separated from San Antonians. Before arriving, they will stop at Travis Air Force Base in Sacramento to be screened. Anyone showing symptoms will be kept there. If anyone shows signs while at Lackland, an unidentified area hospitals will be involved. For more information on the San Antonio screening process, go to our website, ksat.com. And we have uh, st news out of uh, state news in out of state news. My apologies. A Colorado police officer will not be facing DUI charges after a video of him passed out at the wheel of his patrol car went viral. He's, uh, he's a little intoxicated. District Attorney says Officer Nate Meyer will not be prosecuted for DUI because the police department failed to investigate one of their own despite the smell of alcohol. The deputy chief said he believed the officer had a medical condition. Police never tested his blood, but the hospital found the officer's blood alcohol level to be more than five times over the legal limit. Aurora's police admit they were wrong. Right now it's 438, 34 degrees. Breaking their silence. Still to come what one accuser had to say after a California TV doctor and his girlfriend were, were let go of all charges. Plus a recap of last night's Spurs game. Up next, who started their lead against the Portland Trailblazers. And live cam giving us a look outside. So happy to have you with us on a Friday. We can forecast details coming up. Antonio Spurs went head to head with the Portland Trailblazers last night. Spurs down by as many as six in the first quarter with Bryn Forbes starting to lead them back with a three. LaMarcus Aldridge continued his career year from the three point range, part of a 12 2 run, putting the Spurs up by five. Trailblazers beat San Antonio 125 117, taking two of three games from the Spurs to claim the season series in a matchup with uh, playoff tiebreaker potential. This is not a good sign for us. <sighs> Zen Friday, well, Zen Friday. There's always next year. Uh, 442, <laughs> 34 degrees. Making the perfect waffle maker for all your cooking needs. Still to come on GMSA, 12 on your side's Marilyn Mortz puts a few to the test.
ABC News has an exclusive with the reality TV doctor and his girlfriend accused of victimizing hundreds of women. Next on GMSA, breaking their silence as the charges against them are dropped. Welcome back. Your time now 445. All charges were dropped against a TV doctor and his girlfriend. Well, in this morning's GMA First Look, why attorneys made the decision after hundreds of women allegedly broke their silence. In this morning's GMA First Look, breaking their silence. I spoke with two lawyers who represent women who claim that they were sexually assaulted by you both. What do you have to say to that? In 2018, Dr. Grant Robichaux and Sarissa Riley were accused of unspeakable crimes against women by the Orange County District Attorney's Office. But on Tuesday, a stunning reversal. The new district attorney announcing plans to drop all charges. Hearing Todd Spitzer say that he was going to request all charges be dismissed. What was that like? I still can't believe it. It's like I just said, it's so... Surreal. I Coming up at 7 a.m., what they want the world to know and their message for the people who put them behind bars. With your GMA First Look, I'm Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. From breakfast to burgers, waffle makers seem to be the cool kitchen and cooking, cooking tool these days. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore shows us which ones work best in the waffle test. 12-year-old Evan is making brownies and get this, a waffle maker. I think it cooks them better because it has the indents and also they're just more fun to eat, I think. <laughs> Seems waffle makers are hot. Home cooks are waffling everything now from hash browns to grilled cheese to puff pastry. To help you get in on the trend, Consumer Reports tested eight waffle makers for how well they turn out perfectly browned waffles and for how clear the controls are. Some of the things we flag are uneven browning at the top or bottom of the waffles, narrow crevices on the grid that might be hard to clean, or handles that get really hot to the touch. So here are three they recommend. On the high end, there's the Breville Smart Four Slicer. It's $250. It has several browning settings. It's easy to use and beeps when your waffle is done. This Calphalon only cooks two at a time, but it's less than half the price. It did a good job browning, has a countdown timer, and can turn on its side for storage. If you're on a budget, Consumer Reports named this Chefman a Best Buy. It's $30. It cooks one waffle at a time. The handle does get hot, so you have to use a mitt. It also stores easily. All three waffle makers have moats to catch drips. By the way, experts say the key to great waffles or brownies is to preheat. They're really good. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Look very tasty at the not, end. Not really, no. Mike's over here bragging about his waffles. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. He claims to have the recipe. best recipe in the great, world. A oh. great what recipe online. It's great. Well, there's talk and there's action. Hey, have you seen the new pretzel pop tarts that are out there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The new thing, the hot new thing. Tried them. Chocolate and then cinnamon sugar, I think. No, I haven't tried them yet. The reason why you turn the box over and then you look at the calorie count. I was like, no, yeah, you're not I'll, supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. I understand. Mm. We need to go to traffic. Yeah, let's go to traffic. Hey, thanks, guys. Well, it looks like they just cleared that accident on 37 in Commerce. So that's good news. All lanes are open there. Uh, just remembering, just uh, went over this last time. This is going to be closed. Alma Ranch Parkway to State Highway 151 from tonight at 5 a.m. All or I'm sorry, from tonight at 9 p.m. all the way to Monday morning at 5 a.m. Alma Ranch Parkway to 151 is going to be closed. So just uh, make accommodations for that. Let's take a look at some drive time. If you're on westbound 1604 from US 281 to I-10, seven minutes. And if you're on southbound 281 from Valverde to 1604, six minutes. Good times there. Let's take a look at the trans guide. Looks like we have some construction on State Highway 151 and Loop 410. Looks like the access road going southbound of 410. Usually that clears up right before rush hour traffic. Taking a look at other parts of the city. 37 and I-10. Uh, you can barely see anything there. 37 in Carolina looks great. And uh, let's see what else we have here. We have 35 at Evans on the north side looking very, very smooth. Thank you, Nick.
Weekend's almost here, guys. Hang in there. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's going to be a beautiful one again. Well, Sunday is going to be a little iffy. So That's all right. We have count, Friday and Saturday. Count today and tomorrow and um, weekend's nights. It's going to be warmer this weekend. It's going to be warmer today. Yesterday, of course, you know, after all the, the fun that uh, happened Wednesday night, there was a great sunrise, and we're going to be looking at one of those again this morning. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Looking off to the northwest, uh, nothing showing up out there, and temperatures are pretty darn chill chilly again. Excuse me, I should say just pretty darn cold. 26 in Comfort, 28 in Tarpley. Nothing reported at Lost Maples right now. Bulverde at uh, 28, 34 out there at the airport and some freezing readings around there. And then we do have wind chill temperatures again this morning. Not extreme. It's not a real strong wind, but just enough with these breezes here out of the northwest to add that little bit of a just a bite to some of those temperatures. And when that wind kicks up, it's like, ooh, Nelly, it's kind of cold. And the wind's going to be shifting out of the west later on today. And so we get a little bit of a downsloping situation as well as some overall pattern changes. What that means is we're going to be gaining almost 40 degrees throughout the day, which you don't see. I mean, 30 is a lot, but gaining 40 degrees, uh, it's going to be a huge warm up, though. It's going to be a fantastic day. Maybe a couple of high wispy clouds out there today or a little bit of a milky shade to the sky. And that's going to be about it. And as far as the humidity, it's very, very dry air, of course. That's what's allowing temperatures to drop down. We are going to keep the dry air around throughout the rest of today as well as tomorrow. But then throughout the day tomorrow, here comes the humidity in here. That's going to help with more clouds late in the afternoon as well as tomorrow night. And even by Sunday morning, there could be a couple of sprinkles around here. Humidity really starts to come back in throughout the day on Sunday. And that's also going to help with uh, some uh, rain chances later in the day on Sunday. Throughout the rest of today, nothing going on. Same thing basically with tomorrow. But again, here comes the clouds that are going to start to build in there by tomorrow evening. And uh, in the wee hours of Sunday morning, we could see a couple of those showers. The cold air, which is in place right now, is now covering most all of the country. And I think we're going to be getting another little kind of push of uh, cold air. Not as cold, but it's going to keep temperatures we going to get the little bit below normal throughout most of next week once we get done with the, uh, the warm day today and the weekend. 64 today at noon, so we've already gained 30 degrees by noon, and then we'll top off right around 70, so a lot of folks will be in the low 70s today. Plenty of sunshine, a couple of wispy clouds out there. Westerly wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Sunshine to start off, then increasing clouds throughout the day tomorrow. 73 degrees, cool start, although closer to normal. And then on Sunday, a very, very warm morning, we get up into the upper 60s. I think we're going to have more clouds to maybe hold temperatures in check just a little bit. I'm still thinking that it's going to be, and based on one computer model, not everything's in agreement right now, but that the front's going to move through during the day on Monday. So we'll start off very mild, and then temperatures will be dropping and kind of splitting a couple of computer models throughout the rest of next week. Consistent temperatures about 60, lows in the upper 40s primarily, and a couple of showers here and there. So it will be on the cooler side next week. Wow. A lot of rain chances next week. I mean, it's not wash out, but at least there's those little rain yeah. chances. Yeah. Thanks. 452, 34 degrees. A preview of this year's Oscars category is just ahead. The movies and directors nominated and who our GMSA crew thinks will actually win. Actress Margot Robbie is preparing for a big weekend in Hollywood. The actress has been nominated for two Oscars this year for her roles in Bombshell and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. In addition, Latest film Birds of Prey debuts this weekend is expected to top the box office. The Suicide Squad spinoff, the first comic book film of the year, and it's looking at about a $15, $50 million or more opening. Also up for an award, Little Women. The film has now earned over $100 million in North America. Nominated for Best Picture, Little Women is just one of five nominees that have hit that high dollar mark. Hey, speaking of Oscars, a few of us here on GMSA want to share what we think uh, uh, are going to be best in each category. The nominations for Best Director, The Irishman, Martin Scorsese, Joker, Todd Phillips, Sam Mendez, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino, and Parasite, Bong Joon-ho. And here's who we think might win in each category. Let's see, I've picked uh, Quentin Tarantino, Best Director for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I picked Todd Phillips for The Joker. Mike picked Sam Mendes. Uh, Nick picked uh, Martin Scorsese. And Marcus picked Sam Mendes. Hmm, very interesting. Yeah, okay. Throughout the morning, so, we'll do other categories. I, I think that's the plan right now. Mm -hmm. Just about three till, 34 degrees. Reviews are in, still ahead on GMSA. A look at what people had to say about the Motorola Razor comeback. 
Tight race for Democratic presidential candidates. Coming up on GMSA, who's in the lead for the Iowa caucus as of this morning and where the hopefuls are headed to next. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Police investigating a deadly crash near downtown. Sarah Costa is live with more on how police say they found the victim. It's been four days since the Iowa caucus and the results are finally in. We'll take a look at who's winning and how tight the race actually is. Outside with live cam, another cold start to the day as we get a little bit closer to the weekend. We will take a look at that weekend forecast with meteorologist Mike Osterhage. Caught me with a little hop in my chair. Good morning. It is Friday. It is February 7th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. You do definitely need a coat again this morning. It's a fabulous Friday, but it's cold to start. Any rain in the extended forecast, Mike? Way, way down the road. Uh, we'll talk about that. And it looks like we may have just kind of that uh, sort of drizzly period throughout a good chunk of next week. But let's talk about today because, I mean, it's going to be just fantastic weather. Yesterday started off very, very cold. You know, the first time we hit freezing since back in December. And then we had plenty of sunshine. It was still on the cool side throughout the day yesterday, but different story today. Now, we do have some pretty cold temperatures again, some 20s and some 30s. I think that is an incorrect reading, perhaps, out there at Rock Springs at 40. 43 degrees, but we'll uh, double check that. Anyway, here in town, we've got uh, no wind really to speak of, so we don't have that much of a wind chill. In places, there's a, a hint of a breeze out there, but boy, I tell you one thing, it is, uh, it's on the chilly side in some of those spots. Bernie, it almost seems like it may be a, a incorrect reading as well. We've got a lot of some 40s showing up there in places, and there are a few, uh, you know, a few spots where there's a wind chill to deal with, and not bad though. Mold, mountain cedar, and ash are all on the low side this morning, so maybe mountain cedar season is finally coming to an end. Clear and cold, and then sunny, beautiful, warmer this afternoon. We're going to be gaining about 40 degrees between the low and the high. We're going to make it up to about 70 or low 70s around much of the area. Tomorrow, a very sunny start, cool start, not as cold though, and then clouds are going to increase throughout the rest of the afternoon. We'll make it up into the low 70s tomorrow. Go into Sunday and next week. A couple of showers are possible late Sunday. Humidity is going to really start to come back in here overnight tomorrow night into Sunday. Uh, a couple of showers here and then a few showers not raining constantly, but again, just here and there throughout a good chunk of next week. And it is going to be on the cooler side, especially for low temperatures much of next week. We'll talk about that coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Here's the very latest from Officer Nick Solis. Anything going on, Nick? Yeah, not not that much going on right now, Mike. Uh, right, no accidents. That accident on 37 cleared up, so that's good. So not much going on. Good news for everyone. If you're on the way to work right now, let's take a look at some trans guy. 37 and I 10 looking very good there. Hardly any cars on the roadway there. Let's see what else we have. 37 in Carolina looking very good. And uh, that's good over there on the northeast, the south, uh, southeast side. 35 at Evans, looking great. Traffic starting to pick up just a little bit on the north side. And 35 in North Loop 410 on the northeast side, looking great. So right now we're off to a great start on this Friday morning. Mark, Leslie. Thank you, Nick. Police say a man driving on 281 hit a concrete barrier and that impact killed him early this morning. It happened in the downtown area on 281 North near Commerce. Sarah Costa is live at the scene with the latest on the traffic situation. All things clear now, Sarah? Yes, just like Officer Nick Solis just said, that accident has cleared at this time and those lanes <clears throat> that were closed off on northbound 281 have been reopened. We are at uh, right in front of River Marriott River Center and also the Alamo Dome. But this happening um, just bef just at two o'clock this morning, police were called out to this accident. Police say it was a man heading north on Highway 281, striking a concrete barrier that impact killing him, according to police. Police say they got the call at two this morning for the fatal accident involving only one car. When first responders arrived on scene, they pronounced that man dead upon arrival. Police say they're not sure if he was ejected from the vehicle or not, but they did find the man outside of the vehicle when they arrived at the scene on Highway 281. As for who this possibly is, they haven't released an identity of the driver, but they said it's a man in his 20s. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie.
Other news this morning, a violent attack as a man targets a fellow VIA bus passenger with a knife, stabbing him multiple times. The attacker is now on his way to prison following a sentencing hearing where a video of the stabbing was played. That's right. Paul Venema takes us to the courtroom with a warning that the video is graphic. A ride on a VIA bus on the afternoon of October 7th, 2017, suddenly took a chilling turn for Carlos de la Cruz Bernal, the man on the right of your screen wearing a blue shirt. Sitting in the row behind him wearing tan slacks and a black shirt is 20-year-old Nico Dotsie Jenkins. Watch what happens as the bus comes to a stop. A warning, it's graphic. After the attack, Jenkins picks up the victim's phone from the floor as he dashes from the bus. He was arrested just minutes later, not far away. He was charged with aggravated assault and robbery and was in court for sentencing as part of a plea agreement. There was sufficient evidence to support the plea and that you're mainly competent to enter into such a plea and I find you guilty, sir. The plea agreement called for a 35-year sentence and 10 years to run concurrently for an attack on a jail guard while he was awaiting trial. Neither the bus passenger nor the jail guard suffered life-threatening injuries. Punishment reassessed with 35 years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice and a $1,500 fine. The judge ruled that the knife Jenkins used in that bus attack qualified as a deadly weapon. That means he'll have to serve one half of his sentence before he's even eligible for parole. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. A Canadian flight from Wuhan, China has landed in Vancouver. It is refueling before continuing on to its final destination of Trenton, Ontario. 176 passengers are on board. Coronavirus broke out in Wuhan back in December. Since then, it's left over 600 people dead and infected more than 31,000 people globally. There are at least five cases confirmed in Canada and 12 here in the United States. Changes are coming to a plot of land in Utah. The Trump administration has finalized plans to boost drilling, mining, and grazing on what used to be part of the Grand Staircase, Escalante National Monument, and the Bears Ears National Monument. That's according to a report from the Washington Post. Three years ago, the White House rolled back restrictions on the monuments. This will pave the way for new plans, which the Washington Post says will likely intensify a legal fight over the contested sites. Well, it took almost all week, but we finally have the results, we think, for the Iowa caucuses. Yeah, some people still aren't happy with them. The state's Democratic Party announced Pete Buttigieg topping Senator Bernie Sanders in the tight race. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Iowa, you have shocked the nation. <laughs> Pete Buttigieg ahead in the Iowa caucuses by a paper-thin margin, a tenth of a percentage point to be exact. This is a campaign that a year ago, I think a lot of people were questioning why we were even making the attempt. With 100% of precincts reporting, the former mayor of South Bend, Indiana, took 26.2% of state delegate equivalents in Iowa, with Senator Bernie Sanders in a close second and Senator Elizabeth Warren in third. We just had this idea that we could build a different kind of politics of belonging based on bringing people together. Sanders won the popular vote, but it's the delegate equivalents that are used to choose national delegates and the eventual winner of the Democratic nomination. I suspect that at the end of the day, uh, Mr. Buttigieg and I will have an equal number of um, of delegates to the National Convention. Former Vice President Joe Biden, who some analysts have called a frontrunner in the 2020 presidential campaign, came in fourth in the Hawkeye state. While stumping in New Hampshire, Biden said he respects Buttigieg, but... I do believe it's a risk, to be just straight up with you, for this party to nominate someone who's never held an office higher than mayor of a town of 100,000 people in Indiana. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The Democratic candidates have until 1 p.m. Eastern time today to file a request for a recount. Right now, we're at 508, 34 degrees on your February 7th. We might see delivery vehicles without drivers in the next few years. Still ahead on GMSA, more details on the autonomous vehicle startup Neuro and how it's expected to take over the delivery world. And talking about camping in style, a new luxury camper van is hitting the market soon after the break. What makes the Weekender van so unique? And live cam giving us a peek outside. We're in for a couple of beautiful days. A lot of rain chances next week, though. Mike has all your details coming up.
Welcome back. Your time now 12 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, people who like to camp will soon be able to do so in style. Luxury car maker Mercedes introducing a camper van called the Weekender. It has back seats that fold down and can sleep two people, and two more can sleep in a tent like area that pops up from the roof. The van is equipped with an extra battery and a pull out kitchen. Pre orders for the van start this spring. The starting price, about $70,000. Netflix is giving you more control over what you watch on the platform. Yesterday, they announced on Twitter that it's allowing viewers to disable its preview autoplay. In its tweet, Netflix said, quote, we've heard the feedback loud and clear. Goes on to send people uh, to help its help page, which explains how to turn off both preview autoplay and autoplays for episodes. That could be a little annoying mm -hmm. if you're just kind of scanning and all of a sudden it kind of... It makes it actually makes me crazy. Does it? It makes it makes me crazy. All right, so your world just got a little better. I'm going to be very happy about this. <laughs> right now. I am not kidding you. It makes me crazy. I believe it. Just about 513, 34 degrees. I would cook on you if I wanted to say that preview. A new movie hitting the theaters this weekend, Birds of Prey, what the audience may notice from the cast members coming up. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Google Maps turning 15, what the app has planned for the upcoming future. That's coming up next. Makes me nuts. Needles, essential for the sea urchin. But maybe not for people with rheumatoid arthritis, because there are options, like an injection. Zelgen's XR, a once daily pill for adults with moderate to severe RA for whom methotrexate did not work well enough. Zelgen's XR can reduce pain, swelling, and further joint damage, even without methotrexate. Zelgen's can lower your ability to fight infections like TB. Don't start Zelgen's if you have an infection. Taking a higher than recommended dose of Zelgen's for RA can increase risk of death, serious, sometimes fatal infections cancers, including lymphoma, and blood clots have happened, as have tears in the stomach or intestines, serious allergic reactions, and changes in lab results. Tell your doctor if you've been somewhere fungal infections are common, or if you've had TB, hepatitis B or C, or are prone to infections. Needles, fine for some, but for you, one pill a day may provide symptom relief. Ask your doctor about Zelgen's XR, an injection. Just about 517. Welcome back on your Friday morning. First reviews are in for the new Motorola Razr phone. Now that the company has officially brought back what was once the biggest seller of all time. Kenneth Moten and Elizabeth Hur have details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, the Motorola Razr is back. The folding Moto Razr was officially unveiled along with its $1,500 price tag. Critics say the phone's hardware is underwhelming, but some are praising the phone's look and durability. It could have a foldable competitor from Samsung as early as next week. And Google Maps is celebrating a milestone with new features. Google launched the app 15 years ago this week. The redesign uses five icons at the bottom of the screen, and the company says upgrades for public transit will be introduced next month. And for the first time, the federal government has given the green light to self-driving delivery robots. The startup company Neuro has received an exemption for up to 5,000 of the low-speed R2 vehicles. The goal is to eventually use them for deliveries on public roads. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Morning commute's been underway for just under an hour now. Hopefully no problems on your Friday. Yeah, Mark, it's looking great out there. We're off to a great start this Friday morning, so that's good news to everyone if you're on the way to work right now. Uh, just to keep you uh, updated, we're going to have this road closure all weekend. Alamo Ranch Parkway from 9 p.m. tonight all the way until 5 a.m. Monday morning will be closed to 151. The exit ramp from Alamo Parkway to 151 and 1604 will be closed all weekend, so that could cause some really backed up traffic in that far west side area this week. Taking a look outside at the trans guy, 37 in Carolina. Man, that one likes coming up today. It's looking good. 35 at Evans looking great. Let's do another one here. Let's see what we have. We have 35 and 410s looking good as well. We also still have, it looks like, the uh, construction. Well, yeah, the construction on 151 and 410 is still there. It looks like that's the southbound access road of 410 at 151 is uh, still underway. But that construction should be cleared up here at least within the next hour or so. I was going to say this is our first full weekend without professional football 
in a while, but I think the XFL oh, I can't makes wait. its comeback this weekend, and there are a handful of teams across the country, including... So that's an option. Dallas so the, Renegades, right? Dallas, Dallas Renegades is one. I think Houston has a team as well. Okay. Drillers, thank you so, very much, Robert. You. Wait, what was the league that was here that just... AAF. AAF. Yeah. We have the Alliance long. of American F Football. What, three games oh, at one. Eight games. And the XFL was the one. It was the one in 2000 made by Vince McMahon. Right. So it's, they're, Where they they're bringing the it back. they on the field and everything. Yeah. And yeah. Jesse kind Ventura of a, was the announcer. Yeah. yeah. Is that what it's going to be like, or is it going to be more it, legitimate football? I, I don't know all the details, but they're trying to obviously make it quicker and more interesting. I can't wait. We'll okay. see. If you love some football, you're going to love it. Yeah. Hey, don't forget Sunday, the Academy Awards right here. That's right. Right. ABC. So. We already made our picks, and we'll pepper them throughout the show the next couple hours. And we'll compare notes on Monday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's always tough to do when you haven't seen all the movies. It is tricky. But it seems to get trickier every year to try to get to see all of them, or yeah. at least a, a, a majority of them. Yeah. I was just saying, I, I was thinking about the Academy Awards, and what was the one that, that won a couple of years ago about the, the, uh, the Gill Man, Aquaman, whatever? Um, Oh, you're talking about um, yeah, water, uh, water world. Yeah, the shape of water. Shape of water, yeah. Uh -huh. Which was basically a remake of Splash. So I'm getting the weather. Don't worry about it. Uh, temperatures are very cold this morning. We've got 20s in the hill country right now, 34 out there at the airport at Randolph at 44. I'm kind of a little weird having all these uh, stray kind of 40s hanging around here, but that's what's being uh, reported. I don't know if there's some glitches with some of the, uh, the thermometers out there, but there is a little bit of wind chill in places. We've got 22 is what it feels like right now in Honda. There's a slight breeze out there, and in most areas, it is just light or calm wind and clear skies, dry air. That's why we've been cooling down. Wind is going to be shifting around mainly out of the west later on today, so we'll get a bit of a downsloping coming off the mountains of Mexico, and that's really going to help to heat things up. So we're going to see temperatures getting up there about... Uh, Oh, gee, 40 degrees increase from where we are right now up into the uh, low 70s later on today. Moisture aloft in the atmosphere, a little bit of it, maybe a slight milky shade to the sky, but that's kind of split in here. It is going to be a picture perfect day. It's going to be beautiful out there. Humidity is very, very low, and it's going to stay that way throughout the day, as well as the first part of the day tomorrow. But then throughout the afternoon, humidity really starts to come back on in here, and especially overnight into Sunday. Look at these dew points getting above 60, so you're going to notice the humidity. Sunday is going to be a whole different, uh, just almost a 180 from where we are, uh, where we're yesterday and today as we go into Sunday in the first part of next week. And with that humidity comes clouds as well as a chance for some rain. We don't have anything as far as really clouds today and maybe a couple of wispy ones and starting off the day tomorrow. But then the clouds are going to work their way in throughout the maybe late afternoon and especially uh, overnight hours. And we could ha actually have a couple of sprinkles around here by Sunday and cold air. Yep, it's uh, covering most of the country, but this cold air is going to start to work its way back up to the north temporarily. Then we I think we get another little taste of it. Not as cold as where we've been this morning and yesterday morning, but it's going to keep us kind of on the cooler side much of next week. 64 degrees today at noon. Sunny skies we are already gaining 30 degrees by noon, so huge, huge warm up today. And then we'll top off right around 70 here in town. Plenty of sunshine out there. Westerly wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. We start off with clear skies tomorrow, and then clouds are going to move in late in the afternoon, especially tomorrow night. 73 for a high temperature. I think more clouds are going to keep temperatures down a couple of degrees on Sunday. A very, very mild start. A lot more humidity around here. Monday, I'm still leaning toward the front moving through during the day. Computer models aren't really in agreement with this right now, but it looks like temperatures will be dropping down throughout the day. So I'm going for an afternoon reading of 55, starting off very mild, and then kind of staying, staying on the coolish side. Almost grilled cheese. Yeah, grilled cheese and soup weather and a little bit of rain here and there a bunch of next week. All right. Sounds a little gloomy. Not bad. All right. Oh, you make good soup for us. 523, 34 degrees. I did promise you chicken and dumplings. I will yeah. have to do that. Calling all rock music bands. You can catch the Rolling Stones on their No Filter Tour this summer. When the tour is set to kick off, coming up next.
superpowers or a bunch of CGI to make a believable movie, not the birds of prey. We had almost no VFX with any of our action sequences. Um, most of the, the, the stunts our actors actually did themselves, so they trained for months and months. I really wanted to show women in um, powerful with their own physical selves and the physicality of that instead of relying on, you know, gadgets or, or like a lot of superpowers. It yeah. was difficult, but it was worth it. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of bumps and bruises. I tore my meniscus this day one. She injured her neck, her leg, mm -hmm. your foot. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you had a lot of injuries. Shoulder. Yeah. Shoulder, uh, you know, but we all pushed through. We all wanted it to be so good. Well, I Rolling Stones have no filter. The legendary band has announced new dates for their no filter concert tour. The summer jaunt kicks off in San Diego May 8th, hitting 15 U.S. and Canadian cities, culminating in Atlanta, Georgia on July 9th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 34 degrees. The Democratic presidential candidates getting ready to face each other once again in a debate, this time in New Hampshire. The latest coming up next. That's three in a row. Spurs lose on the road during the rodeo road trip. We have low lights coming. Hi, good morning there. It is uh, Friday. It is February 7th. You made it to Friday, everybody. We've got some great weather news for you Friday coming up in a minute. But first, hopefully great traffic news, too. No, no 30, pressure, Nick. Oh, there's a lot of pressure. 35, and it looks like Shirts Park, Parkway, Evans Road. We have an 18-wheeler accident. Uh oh, closing oh a traffic jam. and That's that always good. is a busy area to begin with. Yeah, northbound. Northbound. northbound, northbound. So. I, we have some trans guide footage of it. It's yes. not looking good. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Osterhage is standing by. Yes. We'll look at our weekend forecast, Actually, sir. Actually, sitting by, but... Who's, you know, uh, right. uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cold start this morning. Matching the description. We're going to have a beautiful day. Yesterday, I, how did I shrink down? There we go. Uh, we're going to have a lot of sunshine. Where's the little thing, the jiggy? Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't always bring people down, but when she does... <laughs> It's the little things that humor her. So uh, temperatures are oh, in the uh, 30s and even some 20s around the area this morning. And then later on this <laughs> afternoon, you know, paybacks we are tough. We represent <laughs> the uh, Yesterday was a nice warm up into the uh, mid to upper 50s, but it's going to be even warmer today. Tomorrow looks like a fantastic day as well. Here's what it looks like outside right now with... Sit down with live cam and we've got clear skies out there. It's going to be a sensational sunrise and... Don't let the looks deceive you, though, because it is cold. 28 Bandera, 26 Comfort, and uh, 29 up the road in Balverde. A little bit of a wind chill, not much of a breeze out there at all this morning. Mountain Cedar, Mole, and Ash are all on the low side. It looks like Mountain Cedar may finally be, uh, be coming to an end because, you know, we had that front a couple of days ago. The first part of the weekend looks very nice, and then I think we've got some rain chances, but not necessarily a bad thing. And it may be on the damp side throughout a good chunk of next week. More on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now, and Nick, I just caught a glimpse of that trans guide camera, and that's a mess out there. It is a mess right now. Yeah, it looks like it's a two vehicle accident, one involving a 18 wheeler, um, 18 wheeler. So we'll, we'll get it to you right now. So it's right here. It's a uh, northbound I-35 at Shirts Parkway. The trans guide camera we have is from North Evans. It's somewhere in between there, but look, look the red on the screen. It is causing a little bit of a traffic buildup right now. Let's go to that. Here it is, 35 in Evans. Uh, looks like uh, it's, it's stagnant right now. No cars are moving, no traffic. So if you are going uh, northbound 35, expect a very big delay. And there's, I mean, if you want to go all the way around 1604 and come back, that's pretty much the only way you can go right now. But if you're there, you're stuck there. So I'll keep you advised on this accident. Hopefully a shirt speedy can clear it up uh, as fast as possible. Mark Leslie. Thank you, Nick. Problems with his cable TV and led to trouble with the law for a Northeast Bear County man. He's been accused of possessing child pornography and more. Katrina Weber is live near downtown with that story about his arrest. And you say that the investigation started with a call from a cable repairman? Now that's according to the arrest affidavit. It says that the repairman was working on the suspect's TV problems mm -hmm. when he noticed illegal images on that man's computer. Well, that eventually led to the arrest of 75-year-old Paul Zappi III. The affidavit says that the cable man was troubleshooting the TV problems last month when he noticed sexually charged pictures of new children on Zappi's computer. The children appeared to be between the ages of 8 and 12. That repairman then notified the Bear County 
County Sheriff's Office. Investigators seized the computer and other electronics, then got a warrant for Zappi's arrest. He was booked into jail yesterday on charges of possession of child pornography, as well as two counts of aggravated sexual assault of a child. I did request information on those other charges, the child, the, uh, child sexual assault charges. I did uh, get that those records, and they show that, uh, that investigators went through Zappi's cell phone as well, and they say that they did find images of him engaging in sexual acts with children there. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We're learning this morning that eight Americans are now infected with the coronavirus on a cruise ship off the coast of Japan. And now anger and grief is growing in China after a doctor who tried to sound the alarm died from the virus. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. This morning, the number of coronavirus patients on a quarantine cruise ship has tripled. Another 41 people on the ship off the coast of Japan have tested positive for the virus, bringing the total to 61. Another cruise ship has been quarantined in Hong Kong after eight passengers caught the virus. In total, 7,000 people are now quarantined on the ships, including hundreds of Americans. The only interaction we have is with the staff for wearing masks and gloves. In China, this doctor is being called a national hero after becoming one of the hundreds of patients to die. The 34-year-old issued the first warning about the coronavirus, posting a message back on December 30th, telling other medical professionals about patients in Wuhan with symptoms similar to SARS. Reports say he was warned by authorities days later for spreading rumors and was forced to sign a letter saying he had made false comments. Back in the U.S., two more planes packed with Americans evacuating China are set to land at two military bases today. Pictures from the Department of Defense show rooms at Epley Airfield in Nebraska, where passengers will be quarantined for two weeks. They'll have Wi-Fi, TVs, exercise areas, and games for children, but no access to anyone except the medical professionals in full protective gear. None of our staff has said they don't want to, to, to do this. This is, this is what we've signed up for. In the meantime, health officials say they're learning more about the virus, including its DNA. We need to bring this virus out into the light so we can attack it properly. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Uh, President Donald Trump, excuse me, is heading to Charlotte today where he will deliver remarks at the North Carolina Opportunity Now Summit. Opportunity is a federal program that aims to provide economic and job opportunities to low-income neighborhoods. It will be the president's first event outside of Washington since his impeachment acquittal. The chaos and closeness of the Iowa caucuses prompted Democratic presidential candidates to focus their efforts on the next state in the primary calendar, which would be New Hampshire. The race is still anybody's game as candidates court voters ahead of Tuesday's primary. CNN's Nadia Romero has a look at how the Granite State could be the spark that ignites a candidacy. With so much attention still on Iowa, people here in New Hampshire don't want to play second fiddle. Their license plates read live free or die, and it's in the state's constitution to be the first primary in the nation. And all the candidates know that winning New Hampshire is so crucial to their nomination. Three days after Iowa caucus goers cast their votes, the results still too close to call. Despite the delays, Pete Buttigieg and Bernie Sanders are both claiming victory. When 6,000 more people come out for you in an election uh, than your nearest opponent, uh, we here in northern New England call that a victory. Now all eyes are on New Hampshire, where candidates and voters are looking for a clear outcome. One reason I am pumped to be here in New Hampshire <laughs> is you all are going to vote February 11th, and you know when we're going to find out the results? February 11th! After admitting to defeat... We took a gut punch in Iowa. Former Vice President Joe Biden is sharpening his attacks on the candidates in the lead. He calls him, and I don't criticize him, he calls himself a Democratic Socialist. Well, we're already seeing what Donald Trump is going to do with that. And in this ever-tightening race... Mayor Pete likes to attack me as well, and he's a good man. Uh, he talk, calls me part of the old failed Washington. The gloves are coming off. Is he really saying that Obama-Biden administration was a failure? Pete, just say it out loud. But I think uh, the bulk of the credit for the achievements of the Obama administration belong with President Obama. The frustrations in the field could turn to fireworks on Friday night as the top seven candidates face off on the debate stage with each vying to break out of the pack. 
unlike the confusing caucus system in Iowa, here in New Hampshire, they have a primary. So at the end of the night on Tuesday, it'll be so much easier to tally the results and to release a winner. In Manchester, New Hampshire, I'm Nadia Romero. A novel idea. You can watch the debate tonight right here on KSAT 12 at 7 o'clock. And for more on the debate, CNN's Nadia Romero will join us today on GMSA at 9. Well, the January U.S. jobs report estimated that 161,000 jobs were added last month. The unemployment rate remained at a 50-year low, 3.5 percent. Pace of hiring slower than the normal monthly average, but it was still enough to reduce unemployment over time. Just about 540, 34 degrees. Star Wars fans, have you ever wanted to stay in a galaxy far, far away? You might have the chance to do just that. How? Find out on GMSA. Silver and Black play again last night, and it did not go well in Portland. We'll tell you about that and when the next game is coming up. And Live Cam giving us a peek outside once again. So happy to have you with us on this Friday morning. It's going to be a beautiful day. San Antonio Spurs went head to head with the Portland Trailblazers last night. Yeah, Trailblazers beat San Antonio 125-117, third straight loss for the Silver and Black. A loss also gives Portland the tiebreaker in the playoffs if it comes down to that. Bright spot in the game, center Trey Lyles scored 23 points and finally looked comfortable in a Spurs jersey on the court. But the Silver and Black will need to do better to avoid another historically bad rodeo road trip like last year. Spurs next playing tomorrow against the Sacramento Kings. That game, 9 p.m. San Antonio time. 543, 34 degrees. Oscars are coming this Sunday. We're going to tell you our top picks coming up on GMSA. Right now, we're going to pick the roads on Transkai to show you. And uh, there are a couple of 1604 Stone Oak Parkway still light traffic. There are all the lights, that major incident tracking out there. 35 at Shirts Parkway. Nick will get you updated coming up. An estimated 5.8 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's, and a new study suggests a link between not getting enough sleep and an increased risk for developing Alzheimer's. That's not good for us. On this shift, CNN's Mandy Gaither has more in your health in it. The health benefits are well known. Sleep is good for the body and mind, but sacrificing those Z's could be detrimental, according to a preliminary study. The findings published in the journal Science Translational Medicine suggest the loss of one night's sleep in healthy young men increased levels of tau protein in their blood compared to getting uninterrupted sleep. Studies have shown higher levels of tau protein in the blood are associated with an increased risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. In this study, researchers found that men who are not allowed to sleep had an average 17% increase of tau in their blood. Researchers cautioned that the study is small and inconclusive and acknowledged they were not able to determine what the increased levels might mean. However, the study shows the need for further investigation. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Oscars coming up. The awards happening Sunday right here on KSAT 12. But before we do that, we want to talk about traffic. We had a major problem. Northbound lanes of 35 near Shirts Parkway. Is that right? Yeah, uh, 35. It looks like they're still attempting to uh, try and get that accident cleared up. We also have this accident here, westbound northeast loop 410 at Airport Boulevard. This accident just came out. Uh, looks like Airport PD is on scene. A one vehicle accident that hit the barrier. So it doesn't look like it's causing traffic buildup just yet, but we will We'll go ahead and uh, see what's going on there. Weekend road closure, Alamo Ranch Parkway to State Highway 151 exit ramp starting tonight at 9 p.m. This ramp will be closed all the way the whole weekend until 5 a.m. Monday morning. So expect uh, major delays if you're heading in that in that area, especially on Calabra Road, where people will try to go to get around this traffic here. So that's not good for the uh, weekend uh, commute, especially how busy. Uh, it gets right there by uh, like the Casablanca Theater. Yes, sir. Thank you, Nick. Today's going to be beautiful, huh? Today is going to be sensational. Uh, cold start, but then a huge, huge warm up throughout the day. And we, I love this picture of the moon. Almost, it's almost full. It's uh, officially going to be full on Sunday. But boy, that's a pretty picture out there. 
Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. Always neat looking at the full moon shots. We are going to have a beautiful sunrise, and as the uh, you know at the full moon time, it sets just as the sun is coming up, and vice versa. So as the uh, sun is setting, the moon is going to be coming up. So later on this afternoon. Look off to the east and you'll see the moon coming up as the sun's going down on the other side. We've got going to have a beautiful sunrise this morning, by the way. 28 right now in Helotus, 31 in Balverde, 27 in Tarpley. Yeah, it's cold out there. There's really not much of a breeze where there is. You may uh, shave a couple of notches off some of the, uh, the temperatures. And we've got very, very clear skies out there. Obviously, we've got not much moisture aloft in the atmosphere, perhaps a little bit of a milky shade to the sky today, but it's kind of split in here. It is going to be a gorgeous day today, and the humidity is very, very low, and it's going to stay low all day long, all through tomorrow morning and most of the day tomorrow, but it will start to come back in late in the day tomorrow, and then overnight into Sunday, a lot more humidity. I mean, we're getting above 60, so you will definitely notice it late tomorrow night and Sunday and throughout the day on Sunday, and that's going to help out with the cloud cover that moves on in here as well. Nothing today, nothing starting off the day tomorrow, but clouds do creep in as the afternoon rolls on and then especially tomorrow night and maybe even a couple of uh, little light showers around the area as we go into early Sunday morning and then a better chance not great, but better chance for a few showers later in the day on Sunday and a good chunk of next week. I think too. 64 degrees at noon today. Plenty of sunshine. Just a very, very nice day. You need a coat this morning and you can probably go without it by at least noon because we're going to gain 30 degrees by noon and then top off at 70 or even up into the low 70s in many spots. Tomorrow, good looking day. Chilly start again, 45 degrees, so not as cold and we'll make it up into the low 70s, low to mid 70s and increase in clouds, especially tomorrow night. Sunday, a couple of showers. Uh, you know, maybe some mist in the morning, a shower late in the day, and then is it won't be raining constantly, but there'll just be the chance for some rain next week and kind of staying on the cool side. All right, now we are talking Oscars. All right, here, your GMSA picks for Oscar. All right, first of all, let's do best picture. What do you think? Mark and I both chose the Joker. Mike and Officer Marcus Trujillo chose 1917. Meanwhile, Nick over here, chose Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's right. For best actor, Leslie, Mike, Nick, and I chose Joaquin Phoenix for The Joker. Uh, Marcus chose Leonardo DiCaprio. Hmm. And last but not least, our top picks for best actress, Mark, Mike, and I chose Renee Zellweger. She was fantastic in Judy. Officer Nick chose Charlize Theron, and Marcus chose Scarlett Johansson. So we all went in a little different directions. And Scarlett Johansson in uh, Jojo Rabbit. I think... Um, uh, Joaquin Phoenix is as much of a lock to win best. If he actor doesn't, something's as, wrong. Um, what's his name was for um, Stephen Hawking's years ago? Oh, Eddie you, Redmayne. Ed, yeah. Eddie Redmayne. Gotcha. Yep. Yes. All right, so we'll we'll compare notes uh, coming up on Monday. Right now, 551, 34 degrees. We have good news for Star Wars fans. The Star Wars Hotel is coming soon, and it's taking reservations. What you need to know about it coming up next. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, five, five, two, fireball nine, daily four, five, nine, seven, zero, fireball four. And your cash five, one, ten, eleven, thirteen, fourteen. Texas two step eight, thirty three, thirty four, twenty. And there is no bonus ball for some reason today. <laughs> Got bite. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, George is live in New Hampshire as we count down to our high stakes Democratic debate tonight. Seven candidates facing off so much at stake after that Iowa debacle. The primary now four days away. You'll see it all only here on GMA. Want to travel to a galaxy far, far away? A well, new Star Wars lovers. This Disney hotel is uh, rather sorry. Let's see, Star Wars Lover, a new Disney hotel is for you. Disney is going to start taking reservations this year for Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, a hotel experience, which is in Orlando, Florida. Travelers can stay for two days, two nights in a faux spaceship. They'll meet in a terminal and go through a fake blast off. Then their stay will take them to a part of the Star Wars narrative. Disney announced reservations for uh, Thursday. The hotel isn't scheduled to open until the year 2021. And for more information, check it out online.
Right now we are approaching about four minutes till. It's time to indulge in some classic Southern cooking. In the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, we're gonna take a look at the start of crawfish season in today's flavor phase. And as we go to Transguide right, net right now, I want to tell you once again, don't forget to download the KSAT app. You will get traffic alerts right to your phone. And again, the major accident, expect big delays. Nick set this alert out about 18 minutes ago. We're talking about a major accident, northbound 35 at Schertz Parkway, far northeast side. You're looking at your screen right now. We've got heavy traffic. What you really can't see is how it's affecting traffic flow in those lanes coming at the camera lens right now. But expect big problems in that area. It's an important part of town as far as our morning commute goes. Nick will have the very latest and try to steer you about in around any possible detours. That is coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio on this Friday morning. So glad you're with us. Grab another cup of coffee. We will be right back. A man is dead after an accident on Highway 281 in Commerce in the downtown area. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. We'll have those details in just a bit. Bear County Jail inmate back in jail after being wrongfully released. BCSO says a clerical issue caused the error. And live cam giving us a look outside. Welcome to your Friday, everybody. It's another cold start to your day, but we're going to see plenty of sunshine later. Mike is standing by with your forecast. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Friday. It's February 7th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. And it looks like we're going to have great weather for a Friday, which is good news. Looking ahead to the whole weekend. And how are we looking overall, sir? Uh, well, if you count today as part of the weekend, two to the three days. Okay. Right? Very nice. We're going to have a lot more clouds and more humidity on Sunday. Maybe a couple of uh, showers around here. But today is going to be just sensational. Tomorrow is going to be a great looking day as well. And we're going to have a good looking sunrise this morning. Obviously, we're not seeing the glow of the sunrise as of yet 35 degrees out there at the airport. We, for some reason, went up one little notch in the past uh, hour. 28 Bandera right at freezing in Bulverde. New Braunfels just below freezing. Mountain Cedar Mold and Ash are all on the low side. And this is actually in behind that front because remember a couple of days ago it was on the breezier side and we had a little bit of a breeze yesterday. So maybe Mountain Cedar season is finally winding down, which would be fantastic news. We are going to see temperatures staying about where they are. Best way to put it throughout the next uh, couple of hours, right around mid 30s here in town. And then a huge warm up. It's going to warm up very, very quickly. You're going to watch the thermometer go up over the next couple of hours up to noon. We'll be up to 64 degrees and then we'll top off right around 70 here in town. A lot of low 70s. So 35, almost 40 degree rise in temperatures throughout the day and plenty of sunshine. Beautiful day if you want to head off to the rodeo and tonight it'll cool down fairly quickly once again once the sun goes down tonight. Weekend forecast we'll talk about next week and maybe a little bit on the damp side next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis and still got that big problem up there on uh, 35. Oh yeah, Mike. It's uh, still causing some major delays going northbound. We have another accident now. It looks like uh, it looks like uh, we have another accident. Uh, let me get my mic on here. You're on. Good? You're on. I'm on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're still having that problem. 35 North. Man, it looks like we have another accident. Uh, 35 North near Splashtown. So let's uh, check this out first. So here we go. Uh, Right here, major accident, northbound IH-35 North at Splashtown. It looks like SAPD is on scene. They have one whole lane blocked off. I got some trans guide footage of that. We're still working on this major accident, northbound IH-35 at Shirts Parkway. It's actually in between Shirts and Evans, but you can see the traffic buildup it's causing right there. That's uh, pretty, uh, pretty substantial, especially if you're going northbound. Expect a delay. All right, we also have this road weekend road closure, Alamo Ranch Parkway to State Highway 151. It will be closed down tonight at 9 p.m. and will not open again until 5 a.m. Monday morning. Expect a lot of traffic, especially in that Calabria Road to 1604 area. All right, trans guy footage. Here's 35 at Shirts Parkway. That's not looking very good right now. That's a lot of traffic there. It looks like it's on two ways. It's on the southbound access road and then the main lanes of the northbound um, uh, lane. So just expect a delay if you're heading anywhere near that area. Mark Leslie, back to you. 
Thank you, Nick. New this morning, police investigating a deadly crash on Highway, highway 281 in the downtown area after a dr driver slammed right in quote, to a concrete barrier. Happened on northbound 281 at Commerce earlier this morning. Sarah Costa is live downtown. Sarah, what do we know about the victim? Good morning, Mark and Leslie. All we know at this time is that it was a man in his 20s, police say. Unfortunately, he was the only person involved in this accident. What we know at this time is police got a call around 2 o'clock this morning to Highway 281. That's where the accident happened. To give you an idea, it's Highway 281 northbound near the Alamo Dome on one side and Marriott River Center on the other side. And at this time, the scene is clear. But what happened was a man was heading north on Highway 281, striking a concrete barrier, the impact killing him, according to police. Police say they got the call at 2 this morning for that fatal accident involving only one car. When first responders arrived on scene, the, the, they pronounced the man dead upon arrival. Police say they are not sure if the victim was ejected from his car, but they did find him outside of his SUV. As for what caused this accident or what caused this man to lose control and slam into that concrete barrier, police say they are still investigating. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. Well, a man is back behind bars this morning after being wrongfully released from the Bear County Jail last night. Our Defenders team learned that 24-year-old Alexander Murray received a PR bond and was released from jail yesterday. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says a clerical error occurred while Murray was spending mag pending rather magistration for a warrant in a different county. Deputies searched for Murray and eventually found him in the 600 block of Nolan Street late last night, which is on the east side. There was a crime caught on camera, a man targeting a fellow via bus passenger, violently attacking him with a knife multiple times. The attacker is now on his way to prison following a sentencing hearing during which a video of that stabbing was played. Our Paul Venema takes us to the courtroom and a word of caution. The video you are about to see is extremely graphic. A ride on a via bus on the afternoon of October 7th, 2017, suddenly took a chilling turn for Carlos de la Cruz Bernal, the man on the right of your screen wearing a blue shirt. Sitting in the row behind him wearing tan slacks and a black shirt is 20-year-old Nico Dotsy Jenkins. Watch what happens as the bus comes to a stop. A warning, it's graphic. After the attack, Jenkins picks up the victim's phone from the floor as he dashes from the bus. He was arrested just minutes later, not far away. He was charged with aggravated assault and robbery and was in court for sentencing as part of a plea agreement. There was sufficient evidence to support the plea and that you're mainly competent to enter into such a plea and I find you guilty, sir. The plea agreement called for a 35-year sentence and 10 years to run concurrently for an attack on a jail guard while he was awaiting trial. Neither the bus passenger nor the jail guard suffered life-threatening injuries. Punishment will be assessed with 35 years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice and a $1,500 fine. The judge ruled that the knife Jenkins used in that bus attack qualified as a deadly weapon. That means he'll have to serve one half of his sentence before he's even eligible for parole. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Paul Venema. With 100% of the precincts reporting in Iowa, Pete Buttigieg holds his lead over Senator Bernie Sanders. The Iowa Democratic Party announced the results last night, days after the chaos of Monday's caucuses. Buttigieg leads Sanders by one-tenth of a percent in the state. However, the Democratic National Chair called for a re-canvas of all results as the state's party continues to struggle to verify the data. The Democratic Party in Iowa has not announced an official winner at this time. The Trump administration will allow drilling, mining, and grazing on what used to be a part of a national monument in the state of Utah. Three years ago, the White House rolled back restrictions on monuments in what were the two biggest downsizes of protected lands in American history. Supporters say it will help access large amounts of oil, coal, and natural gas. Opponents say the land is culturally important to Native American tribes, and drilling could damage the natural beauty of the area. Fiat Chrysler stepped on the gas in the fourth quarter with brisk sales of Ram trucks and Jeeps driving profit margins of t up 10 percent. That's the best among American automakers during that period. But the company is forecasting a drop in sales in the coming year by about 3 percent.
A new billion dollar plan being put in place to help build more charging stations for electric vehicles. The National Association of Truck Stop Owners teaming with ChargePoint to add chargers to over 4,000 travel centers and truck stops. The plan will focus on highways and rural areas around the country. Back here at home, our KSAC community partners gave us the numbers for the blood drive and told us this year had record-breaking totals, thanks to you. There were a total of 890 blood donations in the month of January. That includes 210 during our blood week, drive week. That was more than double expectations. Now blood only has a shelf life of 42 days, so you can continue to donate, help prevent another blood shortage. You can donate blood once every eight weeks. Head to KZAT.com for more information on donating and more on our successful blood drive. And thank you, thank you, thank you yes. from the bottom of our hearts. 608, 35 degrees. A TV doctor and his girlfriend accused of victimizing hundreds of women are speaking out after the district attorney dropped all charges. More is coming up in your GMA First Look. Some ways to avoid cancer are easy, like avoiding cigarettes, but some ways are much harder to detect. We'll share some hidden causes that you should watch out for after the break. Had a peek outside on your Friday morning. Grab a coat, warm up the car, but you're not going to need it later. It's going to be beautiful today. Cancer, the second leading cause of death after heart disease. There are now more than 14 million new cases diagnosed in the world each and every year. We know some habits, like smoking or sun tanning, does increase your risk of getting cancer, but there are some hidden causes of cancer as well. Eric Hernandez has that story. About 38% of all people will have cancer at some point during their lives. There are plenty of theories about what causes cancer, but what does the research really say? One proven cause, air pollution. It's to blame for more than 220,000 lung cancer deaths worldwide each year. And there's also a link between pollution and the risk of bladder cancer. Another culprit, excess weight. Researchers believe being overweight and obese causes about 8% of all cancers. A recent study also found postmenopausal women who lost weight saw a decrease in angiogenesis markers. Those are proteins that promote cancer. We're surprised at how much reduction and, and the significance of it in, in these markers and um, like between 10 and 20 percent reduction. Red, processed or barbecue meat can also increase your risk of developing cancer. Research shows just one hot dog a day could boost your odds of colon cancer. Indoor tanning is thought to cause more than 400,000 cases of cancer each year and exposure to radon gas can trigger lung cancer. Exposure to high doses of radiation can also lead to cancer. Experts found the rate of breast cancer in female flight attendants is 50% higher than women in other professions, and the rate of non-melanoma skin cancer is four times higher. That's because they're exposed to more ionizing radiation at high altitudes. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Friday morning uh, time check, 614. Let's check out the roadways once again. Has that accident been cleared on 35? Yeah, it looks like it has, Leslie. Well, good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's having a great Friday morning. We got a couple of accidents out here, so let's get to it. First one, when I came over here to the screen, we have an accident came out westbound 410 at Vance Jackson. I'll get you more information on that accident when I can. This accident here is involving an 18-wheeler. It's southbound IH35 north at Ben's Engelman, right there in the Splashtown AT&T Center near that area. This accident is blocking two lanes. SAPD is on scene, but two lanes are blocked off on the southbound lanes. Expect a delay if you're heading that way. This is the accident that Leslie was talking about. It's now cleared up. Looks like that's uh, taken care of. So that's good news, especially as we hit the rush hour. Here is a live look at that accident. 35 at Salado Creek near the Splashtown area. Both those lanes are blocked off. Expect major delays still if you're heading there. Hopefully they can clear it soon, but um, no guarantees, but just uh, expect a delay if you're heading uh, that way. Okay, well, that's one way to start a Friday. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. I'm looking forward to this afternoon. It's going to be beautiful this afternoon. Beautiful morning as well. Just very cold out there, but you won't need a coat by uh, later on today. Tonight's going to cool off kind of quick. So if you are out tonight, take a jacket with you once again. And a okay. cool morning tomorrow. But uh, tomorrow should be a good looking day. And these guys are loving the weather. A couple of bucks. And a couple of young bucks. Yeah, antlers are just starting to sprout there. Beautiful picture. Thank you very much for the case. Look at how they blend in with the uh, with the grasses out there, too. That's a great shot. I've never Thank heard you. that description before. Young bucks racking it out. Yeah. Yeah. I like that one. That's a thing? 
It's a thing. Okay. It's a thing. So here we're starting to see things lighten up ever so slightly, and I need to check my app. I don't know if that is that Venus, Venus or Jupiter. Do you have one of those apps, Mark? No, the one when no. you look at them. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah. I'll, I can get one. Those two. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've got one sitting on my phone. I'll check it. Okay. But, What's uh, your passcode? Uh, oh, don't fall for it. <laughs> don't do it. Don't. Leslie is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, 33 Whatever. in Valverde, 20s in parts of the hill country, and not much of a breeze out there this morning. Slight, you know, a little puff of a breeze here and there. Uh, so wind chills aren't too much of a factor. We do have a little bit of moisture, just a, a bit of it up the stairs in the atmosphere. So that means we're going to be seeing uh, maybe a slight milky shade to the sky. But other than that, it's going to be a sensational looking day. Did you find it? No, he was looking over here. Uh, as far as uh, the rest, the humidity for the rest of today, it's going to stay on the lower side, so it's going to stay very comfortable today as well as tonight. That's why temperatures will drop down fairly quickly. But throughout the day tomorrow, humidity is really going to start to come back into the picture, and especially overnight, look at that on the scale above 60 you start to feel it and we're going to be seeing dew point temperatures all around the area approaching the mid 60s by Sunday. That's going to help out with cloud cover of course as well as a slight chance for some rain. So nothing going on today. Hardly a cloud in the sky at all. Like like I said, maybe one or two of those wispy ones and we'll start off with clear skies, but then the clouds move in here throughout the day and especially tomorrow night and then overnight into early Sunday morning. We could actually have a couple of uh, little light sprinkly showers around here. And then throughout the afternoon, another chance for a little bit of rain. So here's what's going on with the upper level steering winds. We've got this nice northwesterly flow in behind that front that moved on through here. That starts to flatten out. That is why we're going to see more normal temperatures and get on the milder side. And then it's going to be interesting what happens on Monday. We've got this low out here. It's going to be pumping a lot of moisture in here, so a lot of cloud cover. There is a weak front which is going to be trying to slide on in here, and the timing of it's still a little iffy. Is it going to be during the day Monday or not until Monday night? But that front is going to cool things down. And throughout the rest of the week, then we are going to be on the coolish side and a lot of moisture still pumping on in here. So a lot of clouds next week and some rain chances. It doesn't look like any big, big chances of rain as of right now, but just maybe a few scattered showers here and there much of next week. Today, nothing but sunshine out there. A couple of wispy clouds. Beautiful, big warm up too. up to 64 already by noon and then 70 for a high temperature today. Tomorrow we start off at 45 degrees, plenty of sunshine and then the clouds are going to be moving in late in the day tomorrow and then a lot of clouds tomorrow night and into uh, Saturday or excuse me into Sunday off to the east. And then uh, Monday, I think the front's going to be moving through during the day and we'll have a couple of showers kind of hanging around here and temperatures are going to be on the coolish side going into next week. Not cold, but just uh, just coolish. W which way am I looking for those stars or planets? I, I was just laughing at watching you trying to figure that whole thing out. He was like this. Yeah, well, well I've got I've got one, but it's through my camera, so it's got you know like the studio, is, and then there's Nick, it's, and it was Jupiter. Jupiter, okay. I'm, I'm on, holding the see. phone out off to the east here. Uh, oh yeah, there's Jupiter right that there. Jupiter, yeah. And uh, the space telescope. No, up there that too. camera that was Leslie. Oh, I know, I know. He was. Oh, at phone I've got a juvenile something. joke. But I'm going to leave it right there. 619, 35 degrees. Welcome to your Friday, everybody. The Oscars are this weekend, and we are giving our picks. See who GMSA thinks will win Best Supporting Actor on Sunday. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. Sound power is defined as through a surface, the product of sound pressure uh, and a component of the particle velocity at a point on the surface. And the other dimensions. Demonstrating her congestion. Save it, slime ball. I've upgraded to Mucinex. We still have 12 hours to Australia. Mucinex lasts 12 hours, so I'm good. Now move. Good. Mucinex has a patented tablet that lasts three times longer for 12 hours.
You try to stay ahead of the mess, but scrubbing still takes time. Now there's new Dawn Power Wash Dish Spray. It's the faster way to clean as you go. Just spray, wipe, and rinse. It cleans grease five times faster. New Dawn Power Wash. Spray, wipe, rinse. In this morning's GMA First Look, breaking their silence. I spoke with two lawyers who represent women who claim that they were sexually assaulted by you both. What do you have to say to that? In 2018, Dr. Grant Robichaux and Sarissa Riley were accused of unspeakable crimes against women by the Orange County District Attorney's Office. But on Tuesday, a stunning reversal. The new district attorney announcing plans to drop all charges. Hearing Todd Spitzer say that he was going to request all charges be dismissed. What was that like? I still can't believe it. It's like I just said, it's so surreal. I Coming up at 7 a.m., what they want the world to know and their message for the people who put them behind bars. With your GMA First Look, I'm Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. The Motorola Razr is officially back. The folding Moto Razr officially unveiled along with its $1,500 price tag. Critics say the phone's hardware is underwhelming, but some are praising the phone's look and durability. Could have a foldable competitor from Samsung as early as next week. Google Maps celebrating a milestone with some new features. Google launched the app 15 years ago this week. The redesign uses five icons at the bottom of the screen. The company says upgrades for public transit will be introduced next month. For the first time, the federal government has given the green light to self-driving delivery robots. The startup company Neuro has received an exemption for up to 5,000 of the low-speed R2 vehicles. The goal is eventually to use them for deliveries on public roadways. Those are bizarre looking. Aren't they? Mm -hmm. All right, we've been talking about our Oscar picks all morning, and we have more to add. We do, and one of the most competitive categories here are the nominees for Best Supporting Actor. Tom Hanks in A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Anthony Hopkins in Two Popes, Al Pacino and Joe Pesci in Irishman, and Brad Pitt in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. All right, drum roll, please. Here are our picks. Mark, Mike, and Nick, and myself, we all chose Brad Pitt. Meanwhile, Marcus Trujillo thinks Joe Pesci should win. Okay. And remember, you can watch the Oscars right here on KSAT this Sunday, beginning at 7 o'clock. And we will compare notes and see how we did. I love the movie, um, Hollywood. What's it called? Once Upon a Time, Time in Hollywood. Hollywood. And Brad Pitt was amazing. He was, yeah. And he's never won. He's that never won. Great so kind of like Leo, you know, when he won for Revenant, I think Brad Pitt is due. Uh, also, uh, all respect to those actors in The Irishman, I hated The Irishman. You didn't like it at all. No. Boring, long aimless. Actually, I thought it was you, kind of a self-indulgent vehicle for all the actors and the directors. You weren't um, the only one. I've read a lot of yeah. reviews online. What was that? Oh, I loved it. Uh, you it. loved it? You loved, loved it, Yeah. I, yeah. I would watch I, it again. Well, totally. you're armed, so that's cool. Mike agrees with you, <laughs> totally I agree with you. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I haven't I'm seen not it. The, although the critics were raving about the Irishman. I'm just wondering if they have any second thoughts. I don't know. I love the Joker. 626 now and 35 degrees. Next big moment for the Democratic primary race right around the corner. We'll take a look at how some candidates are preparing for tonight's de debate in New Hampshire. Uh, the, the Spurs are not doing so hot on this year's radio road trip. We'll see what went wrong with last night's game against the Trailblazers. They lost. So. A man who called for TV repairs may now have to call a lawyer. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That man has been arrested on child pornography and other charges. I'll have that story. A man driving on 281 in the downtown area, slamming into a concrete barrier and dying on the impact. I'm Sarah Acosta. In just a bit, we'll tell you what police are saying about this fatal accident. The Democratic candidates are now turning their focus to New Hampshire and gearing up for tonight's debate. I'm Inez de la Quatera, and I'll have all the details coming up. Outside with life, can it cooled off quick last night. It's cold this morning, and uh, Friday morning sunrise is just getting going, and we are now hitting our stride. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday. It is February 7th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. We've had a couple of problems so far on the roadways. Maybe it's kind of smoothed out now? No, I've been a busy guy this morning. Uh, looks like Loop 410 westbound at Cherry Ridge. We've got a major accident. Uh -oh. Still uh, getting worked on right now. Okay, let's get a bus stop forecast from... Mike Osterhage. Well, as you saw from that uh, live cam, it is a glorious morning, but it is cold. We have glorious Def again. Ah. Uh, it's, <laughs> grab a coat before you head out the door. <laughs> 
<laughs> and what is it when you have the door? <laughs> and then later on this afternoon, plenty of sunshine, 70. Oh. <laughs> 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 Maybe Nick should be doing this. That's <laughs> <laughs> not good, Leslie. <laughs> that was good. Wow. <laughs> oh, you asked for it. <laughs> not many ahs out of her. So, <laughs> kind of runs out of gas there. 28 Bandera, Kerrville, 27, <clears throat> excuse me, in Tarpley, 31 in New Braunfels, and 35 out there at the airport. Mountain Cedar Mold and Ash are all on the low side. And as you saw, temperature is going to be warming up very nicely throughout the day. Tomorrow's going to be another fantastic day. Not as cold in the morning and maybe a little bit warmer in the afternoon. And then the clouds start to move on in here. We do have some, uh, some rain chances to, uh, to talk about. And another front, maybe even a couple of them, they're going to be moving through next week. Not as strong as the one that moved through just a couple of days ago, but it'll keep us on the cool side next week. But, boy, you won't need a jacket by later on this afternoon. Details on the weekend coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And, yeah, this is, what, about the third or fourth really big accident this mm -hmm. morning. Probably, the yeah, about yeah. the fourth, one every 30 minutes. Uh, looks like this one's just about to clear, though, Mike, so that's good news. Or it might have cleared already when I just checked the trans guide right now. I didn't see no police lights out there, so it looks like they may have uh, cleared this accident on 410 westbound at uh, Cherry Ridge. It came out between Vance Jackson and Cherry Ridge. It was right there. But first, I want to talk about this weekend's road closure. If you're on Alamo Ranch Parkway, um, they're going to close the ramp to 151 and 1604, the exit ramp, from 9 p.m., today all the way to 5 a.m. Monday morning. So once again, Alamo Ranch Parkway ramp on ramp to South uh, to State Highway 151 and 1604 will be closed all weekend. Calabria is probably going to be very backed up. This is the accident. It looks like it just cleared up right now, but look at the traffic it was causing. A lot of build up there on westbound uh, 410. Uh, let's see what we have. Yeah, looks like it's cleared. It was right here. Don't see any more police lights. So good news for everyone. Looks like that accident is cleared up. Mark, Leslie, back to you. Thank you very much, Nick. A Northeast Bear County man has gone from having TV troubles to real life legal drama. He's been arrested on charges related to child pornography and child sexual assault. And sheriff investigators say it came to light thanks to a cable repairman. Katrina Weber is near downtown with a live report. And we understand investigators say he not only had illegal photos on his computer, but also on his cell phone. Well, that's right. They say they found those other images later while checking, uh, while it, conducting their investigation. Now, they arrested 75 year old Paul Zappi III yesterday, but the arrest affidavit says this investigation began last month after a cable repairman who was working on Zappi's TV troubles noticed images on his computer of new children. It says those children who were between 8 and 12 years old were engaging in sex acts. The investigators say they seized the computer and those other electronics from Zappi's home. When they went through his cell phone, they say they found those other pictures. Now, the affidavit says there were pictures of Zappi himself engaging in sex acts with two different children. He was booked into jail yesterday with his bond set at $200,000. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Man slammed into a concrete barrier overnight on Highway 281 here in the downtown area, killing him instantly. The deadly accident happened on northbound 281 in the Commerce area. Our Sarah Costa is live downtown with what police know about that crash so far. Sarah? Good morning, Mark. And police say what they know is that it was a man in his 20s that was killed, unfortunately, in this accident, that he was the only driver involved in this accident. Now the scene has cleared for the last hour or so, but I want to show you video from what it looked like earlier this morning. Now police say a man was heading northbound on 281. He struck a concrete barrier. The impact killed him, according to police. To give you an idea of where this is along 281, the accident happened on 281 and Commerce. That's near the Alamo Dome on one side of the highway and Marriott River Center on the other side of the highway. Police say they got the call at 2 this morning for the fatal accident involving only one car. When first responders arrived on scene, they pronounced the man dead upon arrival. Police say they are not sure if the victim was ejected from his car, but they did find him outside of his SUV. As for what caused this accident, police say they are investigating at this time. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Sarah. 635, the Democratic candidates are preparing to square off tonight during the debate in New Hampshire. It's the last one before the New Hampshire primary, and after all the confusion in Iowa, the stakes could not be higher. ABC's Ines Delacuatera has more. 
Overnight, the two leading Democratic candidates trying to move past Iowa. Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg appearing in separate town halls on CNN. We've got enough of Iowa. I think we should <laughs> move on to New Hampshire. I also know that we're in New Hampshire now. <laughs> we got to look ahead. With 100% of precincts reporting, there's still no clear front runner in the Hawkeye state. Buttigieg and Sanders only one tenth of a percentage point apart, and both declaring victory. DNC Chairman Tom Perez now calling for a re canvas of Iowa, telling MSNBC I want to make sure that every Iowa voter knows that their vote was counted and that we take our commitment to accuracy uh, very seriously. Former Vice President Joe Biden, who finished in fourth place, admitting he took a gut punch in the caucuses, but insisting, I'm not going anywhere. And I'm counting on New Hampshire. We're going to come back. The presidential hopefuls now crisscrossing New Hampshire. Hello, Derry! Hello, Exeter, New Hampshire. How are you? And they're looking ahead to tonight's ABC News WMUR debate. New Hampshire is not the kind of place to let Iowa or anybody else tell you what to do. Biden is home in Delaware preparing, and he's already been sharpening his attacks. He calls himself a Democratic Socialist. Well, we're already seeing what Donald Trump is going to do with that. Seven presidential candidates will square off on that debate stage tonight, just days ahead of the New Hampshire primary. Officials there say they are ready for Tuesday's vote. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. ABC is hosting tonight's debate in New Hampshire. That means you can watch it live at 7 this evening right here on KSAT 12. And if you want to catch up all things election, head over to KSAT.com slash vote 2020. Our new page up and running and has everything you need to know about local, state, and national races. Well, at this point, many of us may be hoping the Spurs do not have a repeat of last year's rodeo road trip. So far, not so good. Silver <laughs> and Black lost to the Trailblazers 125-117 oh, in Portland for their third straight loss. Spurs' loss also gives Trailblazers the tiebreaker in the playoffs if it ever comes down to that. Right spot in the game, center Trey Lyle scored 23 points, finally looked comfy in a Spurs jersey on the court. The Silver and Black need to do better to another, avoid another historically bad rodeo road trip like happened last year. Spurs continue the rodeo road trip out west. They play the Sacramento Kings tomorrow night. Tip off for tomorrow night's game scheduled for 9 o'clock San Antonio time. Chilling news for hockey fans this morning. San Antonio Rampage leaving town. Spurs, Spurs Sports rather in an entertainment announced they sold the AHL franchise to the Las Vegas Knights. The CEO says this current season will be the last in SA and they'll move the team to Nevada for next season. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierberg released a statement saying, quotes, disappointing for San Antonians to learn the Rampage franchise has been bought by NHL's Las Vegas Golden Knights. Purchase shows great value was added to the team during its time in San Antonio, but hockey, just like professional sports in general, is a long game in San Antonio. Our future is bright. The foundation the Rampage built in SA is not going away. 639, 35 degrees. Time to indulge in some classic Southern cooking. We're going to take a look at the start of the crawfish season in today's Flavor Faves right after the break. It's a Southern favorite. Flavor Faves this week is all about crawfish season. Eric Hernandez takes us to Smashing Crab and Stone Oak with more about mud bugs and the best way <laughs> to eat them. It's that time of year to enjoy a Cajun classic. Crawfish, Smashing Crab, and Stone Oak is getting you prepared for the season that has already started. Crawfish can be anywhere from December if you're lucky. Uh, and kind of the rule of thumb is 4th of July is the end of crawfish season. Over the past couple of years, there has been an increase in the popularity of crawfish during the season, with more and more people digging into a boil. So anytime you have some crawfish here at Smash and Crab, you're going to put this bib on, mm -hmm. and then we're going to show you how to eat it now. You just kind of put your thumb under the tail, give it a twist, then you pinch the tail and kind of twist that, get the little thread out, and I peel off the first two ligaments, just kind of throw it wherever, and pull out that tail. 
And while I'm not a big fan of it, some people do decide to suck the juices out of the head. If you don't want to go through all the work of eating boiled crawfish, there are other options at Smash and Crab like crawfish etouffee, a crawfish po'boy, and a new menu option called catfish atrophilia. It's on a bed of dirty rice, um, then blackened catfish, and we smother it with a Cajun crawfish cream sauce. To finish off your crawfish dinner, the bread pudding or pecan pie are the perfect dessert. Smashing Crab is open seven days a week and is the perfect place to dig in, get dirty, and enjoy some great food. Erica Hernandez, Peace at 12 News. And I could be wrong, but I think I saw Smashing Crab is adding another location, I-10 Hebner there in the Colonnade area. I'll try to find out more. All right, when you do, share it with us. I will. Let's find out how roads are looking on your Friday morning. Yeah, Leslie, roads are looking great right now. That accident on 410 in Cherry Ridge is cleared up. Good news there and good news if you are headed to work this uh, Friday morning. Let's take a look at this. I know I've been saying it all morning, but this is going to affect traffic here in the weekend. Alamo Ranch Parkway, the exit ramp to uh, State Highway 151 and 1604 will be shut down starting tonight at 9 p.m. and will not open again until 5 a.m. Monday morning. So expect a uh, lot of traffic, especially on Calabra Road and 16. 1604 this weekend, but just so you know, that is going to be closed down. Let's take a look outside of the trans guide. US 20, Highway 281 and Winding Way. Look at all that traffic. Ooh, that's uh, that's not looking good there. Expected to lay it in that way. 35 in Evans. That's uh, looking pretty good. Uh, 37th and 9th Street looking okay. And uh, let's see what else. We have 35 in Slotto Creek and uh, 90 in I-35. So all around the city, rush hour of traffic is picking up, but it's not looking too bad and no accidents on any major highways right now. So you'll be okay. All right, my quick homework is Smashing Crab has the location that Erica just featured in Stone Oak. They're learning there's one on Bandera, and I believe the sign I saw was in kind of in front of uh, Fuddruckers, their colonnade. Oh, there you oh. go. So we'll keep okay. an eye out for that. All right. Crawfish et Oh, that sounds mm, that's good. Oh, Malfat. Oh, oh, yeah, that, that too. Exactly. Oh, yep. I never had that, though. Malfat? Yeah. Yeah. Malfat. Is, that, is that blackened or is that grilled? Malfat is, means just, oh, Ew. my goodness. <laughs> Chat. Sounds what good. And everything comes with dirty rice. We don't speak Cajun like Mouton does. Hey, uh, take a look at this picture. And a big shout out to Dr. Kimball. He is the one that uh, has all the Longhorns in the oh, that's awesome. cattle drive. Oh, the one that last we, week. Yeah. we just saw on Saturday right. downtown. And beautiful shots. He sent them to me yesterday. There was a little bit of fog the other day. And, you know, the one little factoid, I don't know if you heard it, with those obviously big Longhorns, but a Longhorn can get through an opening all it has to be is just as wide as its shoulders and hips, and he said that they can just turn their head and maneuver those long horns right through there. Interesting little fact. Thank you very much, and nice hearing from you, Dr. Kimball. Uh, what, wow, wow, wow. What would you say, Montfant? Montfant. Montfant, when you look at this, and you'd say that, uh, because it is gorgeous out there. 34 Bulverde, 20s in parts of the hill country, and we've got a little bit of a breeze out there right now. Not much, but enough to add kind of a little bite to some of these temperatures. And a couple of, I mean, a little bit of moisture up there, maybe some wispy clouds, but as you saw in the uh, live cam, there is just nothing out there this morning. It is a spectacular morning, and we've got uh, very low humidity, of course, and it's going to be comfortable all day long. Dew points are going to stay in the uh, 20s and 30s. Start to come up a little bit by uh, tomorrow morning, but not bad, although by the afternoon and the evening, humidity is really going to start to come back in here tomorrow night and then into Saturday, and we'll start to feel it with those dew points getting up into the 60s by well, basically throughout the day on Sunday and then sticking around for at least a day or so. Clear skies today, clear skies starting off the day tomorrow, and the clouds work their way back in here throughout the afternoon and the evening hours. And there may actually be a couple little sprinkles as that moisture really starts to surge back in here, especially overnight and early on Sunday morning. Right now, we've got this nice northwesterly flow in the atmosphere, and that's giving us this beautiful, beautiful weather. I mean, it's just fantastic. Then we start to see the shift, and we'll start to get a north southwesterly flow, and that's going to pull in a lot more uh, moisture around here, loft in the atmosphere especially, so that's why we keep a a lot of clouds around there's little glitches and even little fronts that are going to kind of scooch underneath this and so i think there's actually going to be one coming through here 
Monday timing on it. It may be midday Monday or later in the day Monday, but that's going to start to pull down a little more of this cooler air around here, but we still keep a lot of moisture overrunning that. So what that translates to is a lot of clouds next week and temperatures are going to be on the coolish side and well, maybe a couple of a uh, couple of little showers scattered about here and there. 64 degrees today at noon and then later on this afternoon, high temperature up to 70. Just a fantastic day. Beautiful out there. It will cool off kind of quickly tonight. So if you are heading out, heading off to the uh, the rodeo tonight. Today's going to be a perfect day for it, by the way. But uh, tonight it'll uh, kind of cool off and then tomorrow a cool start. Not as cold as this morning. 73 in the afternoon. More clouds later on tomorrow night and Sunday. Cloudier skies. I'm still thinking that front's going to move through during the day on Monday. So temperatures will drop throughout the day and then we stay on the coolish side going into next week with a few showers. OK, mm -hmm. thank you, Mike. About to till 35 degrees. A new study is showing how reading in Spanish can actually help reading comprehension in English. Join us tomorrow on GMSA when we break down the latest research. Outside with live cam, let's enjoy that sunrise one more time. And the news you need to know before you go is coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. A repairman looking for a cable problem says he found trouble of a different kind on a customer's computer. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. He called the Bear County Sheriff's Office and deputies ended up arresting that customer on charges related to child pornography and sexual assault of a child. That customer is 75 year old Paul Zappi III. He was taken into custody yesterday, although this investigation began last month. The arrest affidavit says the repairman called the Sheriff's Office after seeing images of new New children on Zappi's computer. Investigators seized that computer and other electronics. And they say on Zappi's cell phone, they also found pictures of him engaging in sex acts with children. He was booked into jail yesterday with his bond set at $200,000. Reporting near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A man is dead after he slammed his car into a concrete barrier heading northbound on 281 early this morning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Costa. This happening on Highway 281 northbound near Commerce. What we know at this time, it's a man in his 20s that lost his life in this accident. Unfortunately, he was the only one involved. A man heading on Highway 281, striking a concrete barrier, the impact killing him, according to police. To give you an idea of where this happened, the accident on 281 northbound near the Alamo Dome on one side and Marriott River Center on the other side of the highway. Police say they got the call at 2 this morning for a fatal accident involving only one car. When first responders arrived on scene, they pronounced the man dead. Police say they are not sure if the victim was ejected from his car, but they did find him outside of his SUV. As for what caused this accident, police say they are still investigating. From downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Coming up on GMSA at 9, what makes a legend? Is it character, their accomplishments, maybe their talent? Northside ISD says they currently have one legend walking the halls of Virial Elementary, and he's inspiring others through his can-do attitude and passion for music. You won't want to miss this story at 9 after Good Morning America. Let's check on the roadways once again on this Friday. Yeah, things are looking very good. Started off really busy, uh, ended slow. Drive times, if you're, on the, if you're coming from the city of New Braunfels with 1604, 19 minutes. And if you're uh, going from 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. Great times there. All right, taking a look outside of the Trans Guide, 10 in Callahan looks great. Inbounds and outbounds at Frio looks even better. Let's see something looking even better than that. Take a look at this picture. It is absolutely gorgeous wow. out there. Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic day. It is cold. We are 36 degrees, uh, 27 out there in Kerrville and right at freezing in Hondo. And then a huge warm up throughout the day. We're going to be gaining a good, you know, 35, almost 40 degrees in some cases, 70 for a high temperature. And then tomorrow's good looking day. More clouds, maybe a couple of showers on Sunday. And we're going to stay on the cloudy side most all of next week. Thanks for being with us, everybody. That's Rodeo San Antonio. Have a good one. We're back for GMSA at 9. Good Morning America is next.